This is First News on News Radio 1290 WNBF Binghamton and WNBF.com. Where news breaks first. News Radio 1290 WNBF. Here's Bob Joseph. Good morning. Forecast for today cloudy, some rain showers mixing with snow. It'll be breezy with a high of 38. And the winds are going to kick up again. The uh, National Weather Service issuing a wind advisory for today. Scheduled to run through 7 this evening. Southwest winds 20 to 30 miles an hour with gusts up to 45 miles an hour. The gusty winds could blow around unsecured objects. Tree limbs also could be blown down. And there may also be additional power outages. Strongest winds will be in the afternoon, favoring higher elevation areas. Saturated soil may also make it easier for tree damage to occur. Well, there already has been um, a challenge posed by the weather just over the last several hours. Strong winds and heavy rain did cause problems across New York and Pennsylvania. At this point, tens of thousands of NYSEG customers are still without power. Across upstate New York, the utility reporting electricity was out to more than 58,000 customers at one point. In Broome County, nearly 1,400 customers were without service. The outages included places in the towns of Binghamton, Vestal, Barker, Colesville, Lyle, Nanakoke, and Windsor. Almost 400 customers were without electric service in sections of Tioga County. Scattered outages were reported in the towns of Owego, Tioga, Newark Valley, and Nichols. Penelec reported more than 300 Susquehanna County customers were without electric service this morning. Stormy weather caused some property damage that occurred around the Twin Tiers. Some homes, cars were damaged by falling trees and flying debris. And kept the police departments and fire departments busy last night into this morning. Workers have started building a new garage facility for use by the street department in the village of Endicott. That structure is being constructed just east of the department's main garage on Jennings Street. Rob Kaczynski, the village street and park supervisor, said the project has been in the works for a couple of years. Kaczynski said the new structure will include a wash bay that will make it possible to more completely clean the department's vehicles. The ability to remove more salt and grime from the truck fleet should help extend the useful life of the vehicles. Construction materials for the garage project were delivered to the job site last Friday. Workers started erecting the structure on Monday morning as scheduled despite the snow that fell over the weekend. Kaczynski told WNBF News the building will be constructed in stages. The basic frame for the structure should be completed in about two weeks. He said much of the work will be done in-house with village workers who will install things like water and electric lines for the building. Kaczynski said work on the garage project could be completed by late summer. A housing development of some type seems to be a potential likely use for the former Davis College property in Johnson City. Broome County businessman Adam Weitzman acquired the site off Riverside Drive in December 2019 for $3.7 million. He wound up scrapping plans for a basketball academy on the campus after the COVID pandemic. Weitzman now is seeking $5.5 million for the property. Johnson City Mayor Martin Maney said there have been multiple developers asking questions of the village's planning and code enforcement officials about housing projects that they'd like to put in there at the site. Maney said the potential buyers have been vague on exactly what type of housing they might pursue. He said they have been interested in zoning requirements or restrictions for the property. The mayor said three or four people have asked about the process that would be needed to bring their plans forward. And he said it would be nice to see something that fits in with the neighborhood developed at the old Davis College site. He said those who've been in touch with the village haven't offered too much detail on their possible plans, but they have indicated they would work to conform with areas uh, near the site, which would mean single-family housing, two-family housing, nothing too out of the ordinary, according to Mayor Maney. Governor Kathy Hochul has delivered her State of the State message. 
She's um, proposing new steps dealing with public safety and housing. Her address came as both Republicans and Democrats are placing more attention on New York as a potential battleground state for the House in November. Adding a level of national importance to the governor's agenda, the legislative session will also include a contentious congressional redistricting process that could have a big impact on which party ultimately controls the House of Representatives. Now the forecast from the National Weather Service, a wind advisory will be in effect for most of the day today. And that could mean more potential for wind damage. Cloudy today, chance of rain showers mixing with snow. Breezy, high 38, mostly cloudy tonight, low 30. Tomorrow, cloudy, some snow showers mixing with rain, the high 38. And the outlook for Friday, mostly cloudy with a chance of rain mixing with snow, high 39. I'm Bob Joseph, WNBF News. From the Galt Auto Studios, this is WNBF News Radio AM 1290. Also available at 92.1 FM. Shop Toyota, Chevy, BMW, and pre owned at GaltAuto.com. This is First News Binghamton. We are here for you on a Wednesday morning. It's January 10th, 10 days in to 2024. And weather excitement continues. Perhaps not the type of weather most of us would really want, but it's the weather we have. And for many people this morning in southern tier of New York and northeastern Pennsylvania, the power is out. We've uh, looked at the latest numbers from NYSEG, and there are thousands of NYSEG customers in upstate New York, including many right here in Broome and Tioga counties, without electricity. At this stage, also Penelec reporting approximately 300 customers in Susquehanna County are without electricity. Some bigger problems uh, reported in Tompkins County, and a few thousand uh, people now without power, according to NYSEG. And it's going to take a while to get the power restored. Morning, this is Bob Joseph in for Don Morgan. And we will keep you posted with the latest information, what's going on around here and around the world. We do have one school note. Wayne Highland Schools will be on a two-hour delay today. It's Wayne Highland in Pennsylvania. If you're going to be out driving, use caution overnight. And there were quite a few reports of trees coming down in parts of the Twin Tiers. Even this morning, some trees have come down. In some cases, they've uh, brought down some wires and even caused transformer problems. The other issue is the winds, which will be kicking up later today. And uh, the National Weather Service says uh, another wind advisory will be in effect for today and running through 7 o'clock southwest winds 20 to 30 miles an hour and some gusts up to 45 miles an hour. So that brings about the prospect, even the likelihood, of more. More <laughs> power outages. Hopefully not too many more, but uh, wouldn't would be out of the question to see some additional power outages throughout the day as the winds start up again. So uh, be prepared for that and we'll do our best to keep you posted. If there are any major problems in terms of power or traffic this morning, we will let you know. Programming note here at WNBF, of course, First News Binghamton is here for you until 9. Then... From 9 to 10, the Red Eye guys, the Red Eye radio people will be on the air. And they will have an hour of thoughts and opinions. And right after that, at 10 o'clock, we'll start our local program, the Binghamton Now program, today from 10 to noon. So don't worry. If you don't hear me on at 9, 10, doesn't mean you won't be able to enjoy the talk show. It just means we'll have a two-hour 
local talk program today. It will be live, will be local. We will be taking your phone calls and we'll be dealing with local issues plus state and national issues as well. It'll be a typical Binghamton Now program, except it'll be two hours today. And then, of course, later today, uh, from noon to three, Dan Bongino, three to six, Sean Hannity. It's 92.1 FM, 1290 AM, and online at WNBF.com. Where news breaks first. News Radio 1290, WNBF. Six fifteen. It's time for sports on News Radio WNBF. Tennessee Titans have fired coach Mike Vrabel after six seasons with the franchise, having won only six of the past twenty-four games. Titans controlling owner Amy Adams Drunk said she told Vrabel of her decision Tuesday. She said it was a decision as difficult as any I've made. The announcement came a day after the Titans cleaned out their lockers with Vrabel not speaking to reporters. It was the first time in the franchise's 27 seasons in Tennessee the head coach did not talk with reporters since the team moved to the state from Texas. Vrabel was hired in January 2018 and went 56 and 48, including playoffs. Oh, a baseball note. The Cubbies have bolstered their rotation, agreeing to a contract with left-hander Shota Amaniga in their first major off-season roster move. That's according to the AP, terms of the contract not known. Chicago had been quiet since it hired Craig Council as manager in November, replacing David Ross. Cubs were in position for a National League wild card last year before stumbling in September, fading to an 83-79 record after finishing under 500 in the previous two seasons. Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers denies he implied Jimmy Kimmel was a bad guy and condemned those who do, but he stopped short of apologizing for his role in escalating their feud. Rodgers was on an ESPN show for his weekly appearance and addressed comments he had made previously. It appeared to suggest Jimmy Kimmel's name might appear on a list of associates involving a bad person. Scores. Let's take a look at scores. First, NBA scores. The Knicks beat Portland 112-84. In the NHL, Sabres hosted Seattle and Buffalo. Sabres lost to Seattle 5-2. Meanwhile, Islanders hosted Vancouver and New York. And Islanders lost to Vancouver 5-2. to two. That's the latest in sports from News Radio, WNBF News Time, 618. Coming up, we'll have some money news with Wall Street Now. News Radio 1290, WNBF. From ABC News, Wall Street Now. Stocks are coming off a mixed session that saw the Nasdaq composite rise less than a tenth of a percent and the S&P fall by about the same amount. The Dow Jones ended Tuesday 158 points lower at 37,525. Japan's Nikkei, on the other hand, surged 2% to cross the 34,000 mark for the first time since 1990. The rally in the world's third largest market is being fueled in part by optimism from billionaire investor Warren Buffett. Honda is hitting the accelerator on electric vehicles, announcing at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas a new series of EVs slated to roll out in 2026. Right now, battery-powered vehicles make up just 0.5% of Honda sales. Girl Scout cookie season has begun. The 2024 theme is Unbox the Future, according to the organization. No new varieties have been added, but one, Raspberry Rally, has been taken off the order form. Jim Ryan, ABC News. What? They took my favorite cookie off the order form? Oh, no. Oh, no. You never know when these things will happen. As they say, cookies come and cookies go. 
Anyway, I guess the way that's the way that cookie crumbled. They, uh, I guess, reserve the right to sell the cookies they want to. Eh, it's their choice. Coming up next, Dr. Sanjay Gupta with A Better Life. Here's a question for you. When should you exercise? Should you exercise at noon, in the afternoon, at night, in the morning? Dr. Sanjay Gupta will have an answer coming up next right here on First News Binghamton, WNBF News Time 622. with Dr. Sanjay Gupta. You know, if you're looking to lose weight, they say it's best to exercise in the morning. That's according to a new study out of China, and it's in line with a lot of previous research. Planning to work out in the morning means that you're less likely to get waylaid by any number of things that could pop up throughout the day or at night with your family, work, or school. You're more likely to stick with it. A few years ago, I decided to set my alarm really early every morning and get up before everyone else in the house to make sure I had time to work out, to meditate, and on some days, to do some writing. So every night, before I go to bed, I lay out my exercise clothes next to the bathroom sink. That way I don't have to think about what I'm going to do when I get up. I can just get right to it. And you can too. I also think it'll help boost your brain, your metabolism, and get you ready to seize the day ahead. I'm Dr. Sanjay Gupta, helping you live a better life. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. Four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. ZipRecruiter. The smartest way to hire. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. 625 News Radio, WNBF. COVID cases are surging in New York State. And if... You think more people are getting COVID since the holidays. I may be right. See, the Times Union in Albany is reporting that New York now is experiencing the most significant COVID wave since the end of the federal public health emergency last April. And they say it's being driven by a highly divergent new variant. So, it's... I don't know who comes up with the names for the variants. They they certainly are inconsistent. This variant is JN.1. So there. They say uh, deaths, hospitalizations, and cases have actually jumped significantly over the last week or so. And... The latest research indicates that um, the disease activity is surging. New York State, more than 3,200 people were hospitalized with COVID as of last Friday. That was an increase of 40% compared to the number of people hospitalized just before Christmas. So, watch out. More and more people are getting sick again with COVID. WNBF News Time 626. Good morning, 628. Bob Joseph in for Don Morgan on First News Binghamton. Let's see what's going on in the world of entertainment. Here's Jason Nathanson. 
DC Entertainment News. Marvel is getting mature. The first mature-rated series for Disney Plus is out now. Don't be afraid. Echo stars Alakwa Cox in the title role, a deaf assassin who rose through the criminal ranks. We first met her in the Hawkeye series. Vincent D'Onofrio resumes his role as Kingpin, a kind of father figure to Echo. And he talked to us about his intense scenes with Cox, who is deaf like her character. Uh, you know, I guess in the end it didn't feel any different, really. She's just a very good actress and... And she is a very good actress. So thank you <laughs> for that somewhat abridged entertainment report. We didn't even find out who is celebrating a birthday. Anyway, if you're celebrating a birthday today, happy birthday to you. WNBF Binghamton. Where news breaks first. News Radio 1290 WNBF. Here's Bob Joseph. Good morning. It's 41 in downtown Binghamton. The forecast for today calls for cloudy skies, chance of rain showers mixing with snow late in the day. It'll be breezy. High 38. A wind advisory will be in effect today from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. Southwest winds 20 to 30 miles an hour and some gusts up to 45 miles an hour are expected. House Republicans today will begin their impeachment hearings trying to remove Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. They claim he's ignored security problems at the southern border. ABC's Andy Field says Homeland Security is claiming the secretary is doing his job under the laws passed by Congress. The Homeland Security Department issuing a memo saying that Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas's impeachment hearings are, quote, politically motivated and led by extremists. Republicans insist the Homeland Security Secretary didn't do his job in keeping the border secure. Secretary Mayorkas saying Congress did not give him the resources to do that. DHS also pointing to Marjorie Taylor Greene's public comments that the the impeachment hearings are only to help Republicans raise re-election money. WNBF News Time 632. Investigators checking out that explosion at a hotel in Fort Worth, Texas that injured 20 people say natural gas was involved. They say they believe nobody was killed, but Fort Worth Fire Chief Jim Davis says dogs have been brought in to make sure. Obviously, there was uh, gas, natural gas involved. We do not know if gas caused the explosion or the explosion caused the gas problem. So that's part of the investigation. Strong winds and heavy rain have caused some problems in the Twin Tiers and in other parts of New York and Pennsylvania. This morning, tens of thousands of NYSEG customers are still without power. The utility reporting electricity is out to more than 58,000 customers across upstate New York. In Broome County, about 1,400 customers were reported without service. The outages include people in the towns of Binghamton, Vestal, Barker, Colesville, Lyle, Nanticoke, and Windsor. To the west in Tioga County, 400 customers without electric service. Scattered outages reported in the towns of Owego, Tioga, Newark Valley, and Nichols. And then to the south in Susquehanna County, Penelec reported more than 300 customers without electric service. Stormy weather has caused some property damage as well. Some people had their homes damaged because of flying debris or trees that were falling down. Some cases, even this morning, trees are blocking roadways and bringing down power lines and causing transformers to arc or catch on fire. So if you're going to be out traveling around, pay attention to your surroundings. Keep an eye out for things so you don't accidentally run into a tree or power lines or other debris that was blown around by the storm. Nandicad workers have started to build a new garage facility for use by the street department. That structure is being constructed east of the department's main garage on Jennings Street. Rob Kaczynski, the Village Street and Public Works, or rather uh, the Village Street and Park Supervisor, said the project has been in the planning stages for the past couple of years. He thinks the work could be completed by late summer. Housing development of some type is emerging as a potential likely use at the former Davis College campus in Johnson City. 
Businessman Adam Weitzman had acquired that property back in 2019. He thought he had a deal for the campus, but that fell through several weeks ago. He's now listing the property again for $5.5 million. Johnson City Mayor Martin Maney told WNBF News multiple developers have come around asking questions about the village's planning and code enforcement policies. WNBF News Time 635. Now the forecast from the National Weather Service, a wind advisory will be in effect from 9 this morning till 7 this evening. Cloudy today, some rain showers, they'll mix with snow showers in the afternoon. Breezy, high 38. Cloudy tonight, low 30. Mostly cloudy tomorrow with some snow showers mixing with rain, high 38. The outlook for Friday, mostly cloudy. And the chance of rain mixing with snow in the afternoon, high 39. Right now, it's 41 in downtown Binghamton at 636. I'm Bob Joseph, WNBF News. News Radio 1290, WNBF. 638 at WNBF. Sad news with uh, word that Melania Trump's mom has died. Amalia Navs, the mother of the former first lady, has died. She was 78. The announcement was made by Melania Trump on Twitter. She said her mom was a strong woman who always carried herself with grace, warmth, and dignity. She was entirely devoted to her husband, daughters, grandson, and son-in-law. We will miss her beyond measure and continue to honor and love her her legacy. The cause of death wasn't disclosed, but the former First Lady's mother had been sick in recent months. Former President Trump remembered his mother-in-law in a statement on his social media platform. He said, this is a very sad night for the entire Trump family. Melania's great and beautiful mother has just gone to a beautiful place in the sky. She was an incredible woman and will be missed far beyond words. So uh, extend our condolences to the Trump family and all of uh, those who knew Melania Trump's mom, who has just died at the age of 78. This is First News Binghamton on a Wednesday morning. I'm Bob Joseph in for Don Morgan. I'll be here with the news for you until 9 this morning. Then, Red Eye Radio for one hour. One hour. That'll be from 9 to 10. And after the 10 o'clock news, we'll start Binghamton now as we enter our 13th year. I don't believe there have been any other programs ever in WNBF's history that have run this long continuously. So the Binghamton Now program uh, marked its, hard to believe, marked its 12th birthday yesterday. Enjoyed the, uh, of course, the big party and uh, big, big cake, 12 candles. Of course, with so many candles, it was hard to blow them out in one breath, but I, um, I managed. It's 641, by the way. What I just uh, told you about the Binghamton Now birthday party. <laughs> it's just a dream. Yeah, it's just a dream. We had no party here. It's 641, 19 minutes before 7. Coming up, WNBF bringing you a look at sports. Also some money news. And in just over 10 minutes, we'll hear from Kim Commando with her tech report. What's the next big thing? Kim Commando has some thoughts that will be coming up in just a few minutes right here on the Wednesday edition of First News Binghamton at 92.1 FM, 1290 AM and streaming at WNBF.com. Where news breaks first. News Radio 1290 WNBF. 6.45, it's sports time on WNBF Hockey Action. Last night, Sabres hosted Seattle. 
but they were not victorious. No, Buffalo lost to Seattle 5 to 2. Meanwhile, on the islands, New York lost to Vancouver 5 to 2. NBA play last night. Knicks easily got past Portland 112 to 84. BU basketball tomorrow. The women will host Bryant University at the event center. And yes, there will be thousands and thousands of students there, kids, on hand for an 11 o'clock game. Coverage will begin tomorrow morning at 10.50 on KISS 104. Then tomorrow night, the BU men will be in Smithfield, Rhode Island, to play Bryant University. The men open their 16-game America East slate with that contest at Bryant's. The teams will tip at 7 p.m. in Smithfield. It's the first of a two-game, four-day road trip for the Bearcats, who also play at Albany on Saturday afternoon. Binghamton's been idle since toppling Marywood 108-52 to on December 30th in its final non-conference game. You can hear tomorrow night's game right here on News Radio WNBF 92.1 FM, 1290 AM, also online, WNBF.com, with Roger Neal's coverage beginning at 650. California lawmakers are debating whether to ban tackle football for children under 12. The bill will have its first public hearing today before a legislative committee. The bill is still a long way from becoming law and must clear the state assembly in Sacramento by the end of January to have a chance at becoming law this year. Concussion Legacy Foundation CEO Chris Nowinski says children who don't understand the risk should be protected from harm. Steve Famiano of the Save Youth Football California Coalition says youth football leagues need more time to implement a 2021 law that puts safeguards in place. So a big issue about to be debated in California. We'll see what happens there. It's the latest from the world of sports at News Radio, WNBF News Time, 648. Coming up, money news. And in about five minutes, Kim Commando with her Wednesday tech update. Here's another I Love New York travel tip. Ski season is gearing up. Whether you're a city dweller or a nature lover, beginner or pro, New York State has a ski area perfect for you. New York boasts some of the most picturesque landscapes in the Northeast with diverse terrain for skiers of all levels, from gentle slopes for beginners to challenging trails for advanced skiers. You'll find some of the most affordable skiing in the region right here in New York. And with more than 50 ski centers spanning the state, there's a ski area just a short drive away. Combine that with New York's other great seasonal attractions and activities, and you've crafted the perfect winter escape. To learn more about New York State ski areas and winter getaways, Visit the I Love New York website at iloveny.com. Download the I Love New York app or dial 1-800-C-A-L-L-N-Y-S. It's easy to love New York. News Radio 1290 WNBF. 6.50, time for some money news here at News Radio WNBF. NBF world markets are mixed today after a lackluster session on Wall Street. Benchmarks fell in London, Hong Kong, and Shanghai, but rose in Paris and Frankfurt. Tokyo gained more than 2%, trading near a 34-year high as a weaker yen lifted stock prices for export manufacturers like Sony and Kyocera. U.S. futures rose and oil prices fell. Federal regulators are extending the grounding of some Boeing jets after the Alaska Airlines plane lost a side panel on Friday. The FAA says guidelines for inspecting the planes for safety are being revised. It's causing more flight cancellations for Alaska and United Airlines, which can't use their Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets until some things get figured out. They don't want any more of those planes falling apart in midair. 
panel called a door plug blew off the Alaska jetliner around Portland, Oregon. The investigation is now putting pressure on Boeing and its key supplier, Spirit Aero Systems in Kansas. A lot of questions being raised about uh, just quality control and other issues. There have been whistleblower claims that things aren't going right at Spirit Aero Systems and also at Boeing, the state of Washington. In Germany, a union representing many train drivers has started a nearly three-day strike in a dispute with the country's state-owned main railway operator over working hours and pay. Train travel across the country and in many cities came to a standstill early today with commuters and other travelers struggling to find alternatives involving long-distance buses, car travel, or flights. The state-owned Deutsche Bahn said only 20% of its long-distance trains were running. The union strike on cargo trains began last night. It's scheduled to last through Friday evening. The key issue is the union's call for shift workers' hours to be reduced from 38 hours to 35 hours a week without a pay reduction. And that is the latest money news on WNBF on this Wednesday morning. By the way, we'll keep you posted with more business news throughout the day here at WNBF. And for local business news, keep an eye on our website, WNBF.com. We bring you news about businesses opening and even sometimes businesses closing. Check it out, WNBF.com. Also, and a lot of people have already seen it, if you're interested in the IBM collection that has been moved out of the museum on Washington Avenue in Endicott, take a look at the video that we posted on Twitter at Binghamton Now. Thousands of people have already viewed that. We did a walkthrough of the uh, museum on Monday, and now people, not just around the Binghamton area, but around the world, are checking out the IBM collection, that video You'll see only on our website, well, it's linked on the website, WNBF.com, or if you want to go to Twitter, check it out at Binghamton Now. It's time now for Tech News with Kim Commando. The question I'm asked the most is also the hardest to answer. What is the next big thing? LG and Samsung may have it, or the biggest flop of 2024. I'm Kim Commando, brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. Post a job for free and find qualified candidates quickly at linkedin.com slash Kim. Imagine turning off your flat screen and it simply disappears. It goes transparent, no longer dominating the room. Both LG and Samsung have it, and LG actually demonstrated theirs live at this week's Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. It works flawlessly. A 77-inch truly transparent wireless OLED screen. No cables, nothing physically connecting the screen to the wall. They call it a zero-connect wireless transmission box that hides nearby, beaming visuals and sound to the screen. Move the screen anywhere, even in the middle of the room. No price announced yet, but you can bet at first this one is going to be very, very expensive. Get my free newsletter for Tech Smarts. Sign up right now at getkim.com. 37,000, 25, 1. Three numbers to remember to get the visibility and control you need to make the right business decisions instantly. 37,000, that's how many businesses have upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Streamlining accounting, financial management, inventory, HR, and more. And this year is NetSuite's 25th anniversary. That's 25 years of helping businesses do more with less. And finally, the number one, because your business is one of a kind. NetSuite offers customized solutions for all your KPIs in one efficient system. That's one source of truth to manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need, all in one place. Right now, download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist, designed to give you consistently excellent performance, absolutely free, at NetSuite.com slash Kim. That's netsuite.com slash Kim to get your very own KPI checklist. That's netsuite.com slash Kim. Kim Commando every weekday morning with tech updates for you 
on News Radio WNBF. Next hour at about 7.53, Mike Dubosky from ABC with today's Tech Trends. He has more updates from the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. What else will they be teasing us with? That's the problem with the new technology. It may look great. You may want it. And then you say, what? $2,000? $3,000? I think I'll wait until the price comes down to, oh, maybe $40. If you wait long enough, usually this world of technology becomes far more accessible and affordable. If you wait long enough. 657 at WNBF. Here's the forecast for today. Cloudy, breezy, some rain showers, maybe some snow showers this afternoon. The high around 38, mostly cloudy tonight, low 30. Cloudy tomorrow, some snow showers mixing with rain. High 38 for Friday, mostly cloudy with a chance of rain mixing with snow in the afternoon. The high 39. Right now it's 41 in downtown Binghamton. Be prepared for more gusty winds today. A wind advisory will be in effect from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. According to the National Weather Service. I'm Bob Joseph. This is WNBF. This is News Radio 1290 AM, WNBF Binghamton. Now on 92.1 FM, W221 EJ Binghamton, a town square media station. Where news breaks first. News Radio 1290, WNBF. Here's Bob Joseph. Good morning. Forecast for today, cloudy, some rain showers mixing with snow. It'll be breezy with a high of 38. And the winds are going to kick up again. The uh, National Weather Service issuing a wind advisory for today, scheduled to run through 7 this evening. Southwest winds 20 to 30 miles an hour with gust up to 45 miles an hour. The gusty winds could blow around unsecured objects. Tree limbs also could be blown down, and there may also be additional power outages. Strongest winds will be in the afternoon, favoring higher elevation areas. Saturated soil may also make it easier for tree damage to occur. Well, there already has been um, a challenge posed by the weather just over the last several hours. Strong winds and heavy rain did cause problems across New York and Pennsylvania. At this point, tens of thousands of NYSEG customers are still without power. Across upstate New York, the utility reporting electricity was out to more than 58,000 customers at one point. In Broome County, nearly 1,400 customers were without service. The outages included Places in the towns of Binghamton, Vestal, Barker, Colesville, Lyle, Nanakoke, and Windsor. Almost 400 customers were without electric service in sections of Tioga County. Scattered outages were reported in the towns of Owego, Tioga, Newark Valley, and Nichols. Penelec reported more than 300 Susquehanna County customers were without electric service this morning. Stormy weather caused some property damage that occurred around the Twin Tiers, some homes, Cars were damaged by falling trees and flying debris. It kept the police departments and fire departments busy last night into this morning. Workers have started building a new garage facility for use by the street department in the village of Endicott. That structure is being constructed just east of the department's main garage on Jennings Street. Rob Kaczynski, the village street and park supervisor, said the project has been in the works for a couple of years. Kaczynski said the new structure will include a wash bay that will make it possible to more completely clean the department's vehicles. The ability to remove more salt and grime from the truck fleet should help extend the useful life of the vehicles. Construction materials for the garage project were delivered to the job site last Friday. Workers started erecting the structure on Monday morning as scheduled despite the snow that fell over the weekend. Kaczynski told WNBF News the building will be constructed in stages. The basic frame for the structure should be completed in about two weeks. He said much of the work will be done in-house with village workers who will install things like water and electric lines for the building. Kaczynski said work on the garage project could be completed by late summer. 
A housing development of some type seems to be a potential likely use for the former Davis College property in Johnson City. Broome County businessman Adam Weitzman acquired the site off Riverside Drive in December 2019 for $3.7 million. He wound up scrapping plans for a basketball academy on the campus after the COVID pandemic. Weitzman now is seeking $5.5 million for the property. Johnson City Mayor Martin Maney said there have been multiple developers asking questions of the village's planning and code enforcement officials about housing projects that they'd like to put in there at the site. Maney said the potential buyers have been vague on exactly what type of housing they might pursue. He said they have been interested in zoning requirements or restrictions for the property. The mayor said three or four people have asked about the process that would be needed to bring their plans forward. And he said it would be nice to see something that fits in with neighborhood developed at the old Davis College site. He said those who've been in touch with the village haven't offered too much detail on their possible plans, but they have indicated they would work to conform with areas uh, near the site, which would mean single-family housing, two-family housing, nothing too out of the ordinary, according to Mayor Maney. Governor Kathy Hochul has delivered her State of the State message. She's um, proposing new steps dealing with public safety and housing. Her address came as both Republicans and Democrats are placing more attention on New York as a potential battleground state for the House in November. Adding a level of national importance to the governor's agenda, the legislative session will also include a contentious congressional redistricting process that could have a big impact on which party ultimately controls the House of Representatives. Now the forecast from the National Weather Service. A wind advisory will be in effect for most of the day today. And that could mean more potential for wind damage. Cloudy today, chance of rain showers mixing with snow. Breezy, high 38, mostly cloudy tonight, low 30. Tomorrow, cloudy, some snow showers, mixing with rain, the high 38. And the outlook for Friday, mostly cloudy with a chance of rain mixing with snow, high 39. Right now it's 41 in downtown Binghamton at 709. I'm Bob Joseph, WNBF News. From the Galt Auto Studios, this is WNBF News Radio AM 1290. Also available at 92.1 FM. Save in a big way at Galt Chevrolet. Seven eleven, a convenience store time. Seven eleven, frosty cold beverages and more. <laughs> no, it's not a commercial. It's just a time. Eleven minutes past the hour. Good morning, Bob Joseph, with you on First News Binghamton. I'm filling in for Don Morgan, who is off today. By the way, First News Binghamton continues until 9 this morning. Then from 9 to 10 on WNBF, Red Eye Radio, and from 10 to noon, Binghamton Now. So it's a somewhat abbreviated Binghamton Now program today. But still, you have two hours to hear what your neighbors are talking about, hear about local issues, people from maybe across the street or around the block talking about things that could be of interest to you. And you could even call in, too. You don't have to pre-register. You could be spurred on by something you hear on the program. Hey, call. It might be the only number you call today where a person will actually answer, maybe on the first ring. Sometimes people are stunned about the quick service they get on Binghamton Now. And, of course, we're on every weekday morning. Just marked our uh, 12th birthday yesterday. Doesn't seem like 12 years. Somebody, a well-wisher, said, hey, looking forward to the next 12 years of Binghamton now. We all are. We all are. It's great to have a live local radio program right here on WNBF 92.1 FM, 1290 AM. And you can always stay connected with us even when you're on the road. If you're traveling down to Old Myrtle Beach or Mobile 
or Nashville or the villages? Stay connected using the free WNBF app. WNBF News Time 713 coming up. Look at sports. Where news breaks first. News Radio 1290 WNBF. Sports time at 7.15 on First News Binghamton. In Buffalo, Alex Wenberg, Jaden Schwartz, and Matty Benier scored second period goals. And the Seattle Kraken pulled away for their seventh consecutive win. 5-2 over the Buffalo Sabres. Yes, there were some exciting times during the game. Here comes Tanev, left wing circle, back in. Far corner, puts on the brakes against Dahlin, rims it around the boards. Wenberg up top, Borgen shot, tip, scores! Will Borgen, a bomb from the near blue line. There you go. That was in the second period. The call on KJR. Kraken beat the Sabres 5-2. Always nice to hear a call from a Seattle station. See, they're not always sleepless. Sometimes they're on the air in Seattle. Meanwhile, meanwhile, on the other side of the state, Philippe Ronick and Quinn Hughes scored first period goals and Casey DeSmith made 17 saves as Vancouver defeated the Islanders 5-2 to, to complete a sweep of New York area Teams. Walking along the blue line, right side, Heronic down the board, centered in front, tip right on top of the crease by Miller, and Soroka made a great pass save. Now they steal the puck, Patterson in front for Miller, back to Patterson, he scores! Oh my goodness, what a goal! Oh my goodness, that was the call on SN650. That's right, SN650 from Vancouver. Uh, again, in the end, Vancouver was triumphant over the Islanders, 5-2. Basketball last night, Knicks beat Portland 112-84. Basketball tomorrow, the Binghamton University men and women will be in action. Uh, men tomorrow night in Smithfield, Rhode Island to play Bryant University. Airtime 650 with Roger Neal here on WNBF. And the women will have an unusual morning game. They will... Uh, be hosting Bryant University at the event center and I'm told maybe as many as 2,500 students that's right school kids will be on hand for that basketball game tomorrow so if you tune in tomorrow uh, just around 11 o'clock or so on KISS 104 you may be surprised at the enthusiasm that you'll hear emanating from the event center that should be exciting any time that uh, kids can go to uh, a sporting event, and uh, hey, you know, it's something where they can basically emphasize the importance. If you go to college, if you go to Binghamton University or someplace else in the SUNY system, yeah, you can play sports, but getting an education also is very important. So you can do both. You can do both. You can multitask. So that should be interesting tomorrow as the BU women play in the morning. And coverage will begin on KISS 104 at about 10.50. That's the latest in sports from News Radio. WNBF 92.1 FM, 1290 AM, streaming at WNBF.com. Coming up next, Wall Street Now. ABC News, Wall Street Now. Stocks are coming off a mixed session that saw the Nasdaq composite rise less than a tenth of a percent and the S&P fall by about the same amount. The Dow Jones ended Tuesday 158 points lower at 37,525. Japan's Nikkei, on the other hand, surged 2 percent to cross the 34,000 mark for the first time since 1990. The rally in the world's third largest market is being fueled in part by optimism from billionaire investor Warren Buffett. Honda is hitting the accelerator on electric vehicles, announcing at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas a new series of EVs slated to roll out in 2026. Right now, battery-powered vehicles make up just 0.5% of Honda sales. Girl Scout cookie season has begun. The 2024 theme is Unbox the Future, according to the organization. 
No new varieties have been added, but one, Raspberry Rally, has been taken off the order form. Jim Ryan, ABC News. 721 at WNBF. I'm Bob Joseph. I was talking with uh, a friend last night, and he said, well, I know you don't watch much TV. And I said, that's true, because, well, for one thing, I have a lot to do, and a lot of what I need to do in my so-called spare time is sort of um, do news research, both for local and maybe state and national issues that might come up on the Binghamton Now talk show. So basically it seems I don't have much time to spend watching TV these days. And the other thing I think I told him during the conversation is, I don't know what shows are on anymore, because how can you find out? And I just noticed here in the newspaper this morning, uh, they actually have some descriptions of the shows that are on. And I just saw two shows that I didn't know existed, and they're on cable. And since I pay a lot of money for the cable, maybe I'll watch these tonight. I might stay up late tonight to watch Prison Brides. It's on tonight at 9.35. It's a new series, Prison Brides. While they started off as prison pen pals, these women fell hard and found themselves willing to risk it all for love with a man behind bars. So that's tonight at 9.35. And then tonight at 10 on A&E, booked first in, or first day in, booked the season premiere. Every year in America, 9 million people are arrested and booked into jail. Each one-hour episode of this insightful series follows the story of the arrestees as they move through the system. So that's what I probably will be doing tonight. I'll stay up late. Again, see, I pay all this money for cable. I just don't know what I've been missing. Lifetime Network at 935 Prison Brides and then A&E at 10 o'clock with uh, booked first day in, find out what it must be like to be booked by the police. 723. So I don't care if they raise the cable price by 30 bucks a month. If they're going to start putting programs like that on, count me in. <laughs> or maybe I'll just stay up late and listen to the radio. Or Seven twenty-five. Bob Joseph with you on this Wednesday morning, filling in for Don Morgan. I think it's time for some political insights. Let's find out what Richard Kentu has for us. Here are your political insights from ABC News. We need to prevent a government shutdown. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell as the government barrels toward a January 19th funding deadline. Another CR continuing resolution will be needed. So the obvious question is how long does the CR need to be? And that'll be up to the majority leader and the speaker to determine the length. A three-judge panel of the Washington, D.C. Federal Appeals Court appeared skeptical to Donald Trump's claim of absolute presidential immunity against charges in the insurrection. Trump's business fraud trial in New York City is winding down. Sources told ABC News former President Trump intends to deliver part of the defense closing argument himself on Thursday at the conclusion of a civil fraud trial here in New York. Trump's defense attorneys are expected to give the bulk of the summation, but the the sources said Trump himself is determined to do a portion of it. While cautioning, plans remain fluid. ABC's Aaron Katursky. And those are your political insights. Richard Cantu, ABC News. 726, and of course, I would be expecting some political discussion on our local talk show today. It'll be from 10 to noon. I know some people would prefer to focus only on local issues and non-political topics, and we can do that, but we can also touch on some of the uh, political things going on in the news as well. We'll look forward to that today right here on News Radio WNBF. It's 727. Her digestive system is News Radio 1290 WNBF. 
providing you with the best solutions of your lifetime. The KSO Insurance Weekly Spotlight with Karen Sweet O'Neill on News Radio 1290 WNBF. Sponsored by KSO Insurance Solutions. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Bob. How are you? Great. How are things? Things are good. I wish we could see the sun, but, you know. Yeah. I heard someday. we're going to see the sun on April Fool's Day. Well, there you go. I hope before then. Well, probably will, but <clears throat> April yeah. Fool's Day, that would be that would be appropriate. Wouldn't it, though? Wouldn't it, though? I know. I woke up, and I'm like, came downstairs, and I said, I opened up the drapes, and I'm like, it's still dark. And it wasn't that, you know, that early. Yeah. It's 630. It's dark when you get up because it's. Three o'clock in the morning. Oh or my whatever. gosh! Ungodly and then the winds. You get up. And the winds, and I thought, you know, I let the dogs out. I thought the dogs were going to blow away, and they're not oh. tiny dogs. But the winds oh. were howling. I, it, it felt to me like the winds were above forty miles an hour. I don't know. I don't have one of those wind thermometers, but man, mm. you know what? Blowing if, like a beast. Can you imagine if if my dogs blew away, just like that door on that? Um, Boeing airplane, yeah, Boeing seven thirty seven Max nine. Ooh, Ugh. Ooh. winds are tough. Winds yeah. are tough. Anyway, uh, what what do you mm. have for us today in terms of advice? Uh, well, we're going to piggyback on a column about talking to your aging parents or your spouse or a relative and helping them to you know maybe talk about some things that are uncomfortable so you can assist them if they indeed need it. So what are we talking about? We're talking about collecting information that may help your parents or an aging spouse, sibling, whatever the case may be, down the road. And it's just so important, Bob. And, it, you know, it, it's an uncomfortable conversation for many people because they don't want to pry. They don't want to say, well, where are your bank accounts? You know, where, what kind of mutual funds do you have? What about your insurance? Do you have a will? And all these kinds of things. But it's so important because once they unburden themselves by sharing that information with you, then they can feel more content that things are in order. So personal information. What should you be asking for to assist a relative? You want to contact. You want to make a list of names and phone numbers of, you know, your parents or siblings, doctors, lawyers, accountants, brokers, tax preparers, insurance agents, and all of that, because that can be essential in your assistance for helping them down the road. Medical information, you want a copy of their medical history. And in this day and age, Bob, a lot of times there's like my chart with UHS and Lourdes and those kinds of things. So you can just basically go online and with the password receive their medical information. But it's still really important to make a list of their medications and just tuck it into whatever you carry around, whether it's a backpack or a wallet or whatever the case might be, so that if you are with them and there's an incident, then you can help the uh, EMTs or the ER to tell them, you know, what kind of medications that they're on personal documents, you know, where's their social security cards? How about their marriage license? Um, what about military discharge papers? That's important too, because if your mom or dad or sibling is a vet, vet then veteran, then um, they may have some options in, uh, in healthcare. So that's very, very important. Uh, digital assets, if they have, you know, a digital account, if they have online banking, if they do Facebook and all of those sorts of things, then you certainly want to be able to know how to access that to help them. Um, end of life, what are their wishes, you know, body donations, funeral instructions, that sort of things. Do they have a will? Um, is it updated? Where is it? Uh, power of attorney, very, very important because that's going to allow the person who is the POA to write checks for them, pay bills, pay the mortgage if they have debts, and, and so on and so forth. 
And do they have a living will and a medical power of attorney and things of that nature? Also, insurances. Make a list of the insurance policies they have. You know, their life insurance policies because life insurance companies don't automatically know if you're no longer here. You have to actually file the claim. Same with long-term care. If you need assistance with nursing, assisted living, or home care, you want to make sure that you can access those benefits for your family member. And then, of course, make a list of the real estate, vehicles, and properties like that. So to see, number one, if there's any lien or debt on those and where they are registered. So there's a lot of work to do to assist your parents or a sibling or a relative as, you know, they're aging. But in the long run, even though it may seem, Bob, like you're being a little bit forward and asking and having this discussion with your um, family member, in the background, it's really, really an important part of just assisting them and making sure that they feel that everything is in order. We are at 1708 Vestal Parkway East, up above Plato's Closet in Style Encore. You can make an appointment with us several ways. You can simply give us a call at 607-772-4898. You can also Google us at KSO Insurance. And all our contact information will come up, including our website. Or if you missed the phone number, simply go to a phone book. We have a big display ad under insurance in the yellow pages. Excellent. Always good advice. Thanks, Bob. Well, thank you. Hope you have a great morning. I will do my best, and you too, and I'll talk to you probably a little bit later. Okay, I look forward to it. Thanks. And that is good advice every weekday, actually every Wednesday morning with Karen Sweet O'Neill. You hear it live on News Radio, WNBF. WNBF, Binghamton. Where news breaks first. News Radio 1290 WNBF. Here's Bob Joseph. It's 41 in downtown Binghamton. We're going to be in for even more wind today. Yes, the wind died down early this morning, and it's not too bad right now, but the winds will pick up again. Just a couple of hours, the National Weather Service posting another wind advisory for the region. It will be in effect from 9 o'clock this morning until 7 tonight. Southwest winds 20 to 30 miles an hour with some gust up to 45 miles an hour. Investigators have yet to figure out the exact cause of the explosion that rocked a 20-story hotel in downtown Fort Worth on Monday. It's thought that a natural gas leak was involved, along with the search for the cause. ABC's Jim Ryan says there's a quest for responsibility. At least 21 people were hurt in the blast and several businesses are still closed. Attorney Lynn Crenshaw expects lawsuits to be filed to compensate the injured, but also... It gives us a methodology to go in and figure out what happened so we can build us a little bit safer world. In 2021, gas company Atmos Energy was slapped with a $1.6 million fine after a gas line blew up in Dallas, killing a child. Federal officials said Atmos had inadequate pipeline management in that neighborhood. 7.37 at WNBF. A group of Hasidic Jewish worshipers were arrested amid a dispute over a secret tunnel built beneath a historic Brooklyn synagogue. And that set off a brawl between police and those who tried to defend the makeshift passageway. Video from the site in Crown Heights showed officers removing a man from a tunnel built into the synagogue when a group of onlookers began shoving officers and tossing wooden desks. Spokeswoman for the synagogue said a group of extremist students had broken through the walls of adjacent properties and the standoff began after leadership brought in a construction crew to repair the damage. Nobody is saying why that tunnel was constructed. 
Strong winds and heavy rain caused problems across New York and Pennsylvania overnight. Even now, tens of thousands of NYSEG customers are without power. Utility reporting electricity is out to more than 58,000 customers. Here in Broome County, about 1,400 customers reported without service. And outages are widespread in places like the town of Binghamton, Vestal, Barker, Colesville, Lyle, Nanticoke, and Windsor. Crews are working to get the power back on. To the west in Tioga County, when we checked last, about 400 customers were without power. Scattered outages reported in the towns of Owego, Tioga, Newark Valley, and Nichols. And to the south in Susquehanna County, Penelac reported more than 300 Susquehanna County customers were without electric service this morning. Stormy weather also caused some property damage. Some homes have been damaged because of flying debris and trees that fell down. Um, Also, there have been uh, reports of falling trees uh, blocking some roadways. So if you're out driving this morning, pay attention so you don't run into a downed tree or other debris that was blown around overnight. 7.39, as we mentioned, the wind advisory will be in effect from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. today. Here's the full forecast from the National Weather Service. Cloudy and breezy today, some rain showers throughout much of the day, mixing with snow. This afternoon, high 38, cloudy tonight, low 30, mostly cloudy tomorrow, with a chance of snow showers mixing with rain, high 38. For Friday, mostly cloudy with a chance of rain and snow in the afternoon, high 39. Right now, it's 41 in downtown Binghamton. I'm Bob Joseph, WNBF News. First News Binghamton with Bob Joseph, 741. And coming up today on News Radio WNBF, you'll have the Red Eye Radio guys. They'll be on from 9 to 10 this morning. So if you want to hear a bit of Red Eye Radio, you'll get uh, an hour's worth from 9 to noon. With Eric Carley and Gary McNamara. Then from 10 to noon, Binghamton Now. And today, we'll be taking lots of calls. People say, well, Bob, can you possibly take more calls? To which I say, of course I can. And that'll be my intention today. Take as many calls as possible. Who knows? One of these days, may not be today or tomorrow, maybe Friday. One of these days, we might set a record for the actual number of calls that we can put on per hour on Binghamton Now. But that only happens if you call. So remember, you can call in today or any day because we're on weekday mornings with your live local talk program. Also, later today on WNBF at noon, Dan Bongino at 3, Sean Hannity, and at 6, Mark Levin. Always plenty to talk about and plenty to think about with News Radio WNBF 92.1 FM, 1290 AM, and streaming at WNBF.com. Coming up, we'll take a look at sports, give you some hockey, hockey information, even some basketball information. And uh, later this hour, in about 10 minutes or so, we'll have tech trends from ABC's Mike Dabosky with some new items that are just being unveiled this week at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Where news breaks first. News Radio 1290 WNBF. 7.45, it's time for sports on WNBF. Hockey scores NHL action last night in Buffalo. Sabres hosted the Kraken of Seattle, and the visitors won. It was Seattle over Buffalo 5-2. Then on the island, Vancouver was hosted by the Islanders, and Vancouver managed to defeat New York 5-2. 
So a couple of uh, losses for New York hockey teams last night. Basketball, Knicks defeated Portland 112-84. to BU women will be in action tomorrow when they host Bryant University at the event center. Airtime 1050 on KISS 104. And the BU men will play tomorrow night in Smithfield, Rhode Island. They'll be uh, taking on Bryant in uh, Smithfield. And that game will be heard right here on News Radio WNBF with Roger Neal. And coverage begins at 650. College basketball last night. Nebraska managed to defeat number one, Purdue, 88 to 72. Nebraska head coach Fred Holberg was on ESPN Radio's game night after the Corn Huskers had a big victory over top ranked Purdue. He said his team's first goal was to keep things close early. It really started from the first possession. I, I thought our guys were really locked in. Purdue was so good at getting out of the gate quickly. And we uh, had a good stop on the first possession and came down and hit a three and had a lead at the first media timeout. That's really what we challenged our guys. Uh, you, know, you looked at the Illinois game, and Purdue, I think, was up 22-6 to six in the first uh, seven, eight minutes of that game. Baseball note, Cubs have bolstered their rotation, agreeing to a contract with left-hander Shota Imanaga in their first major off-season roster move. That's according to the AP. Terms of the contract are not known. Chicago had been quiet since it hired Craig Council as manager in November, replacing David Ross in a surprise move. In the NFL, Tennessee Titans firing coach Mike Vrabel after six seasons with the franchise having won only six of the past 24 games. The Titans controlling owner Amy Adams Strunk released a statement. She said she told Vrabel of her decision Tuesday. She said it was a decision as difficult as any of, uh, any decision I've made. The announcement came a day after the Titans cleaned out their lockers. And Vrabel didn't have anything to say to reporters. Well, I think he knew the writing was on the wall. 748 at News Radio, WNBF coming up, a look at money news, and in about five minutes, tech trends from ABC. Seven fifty money news on First News Binghamton World Markets mixed today after a lackluster session on Wall Street. Benchmarks fell in London, Hong Kong, and Shanghai, but rose in Paris and Frankfurt. Tokyo gained more than 2%, trading near a 34-year high as weaker yen lifted stock prices for export manufacturers like Sony and Kyocera. Here in the U.S., federal regulators have extended the grounding of some Boeing jets after an Alaska Airlines plane lost a side panel. The FAA says guidelines for inspecting the planes for safety are being revised, so that's causing plenty more flight cancellations for Alaska and United Airlines. They can't use their Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets, at least for a while longer. A panel called a door plug for some reason blew off an Alaska jetliner over Oregon last Friday. That investigation is putting pressure on Boeing and its key supplier, Spirit Aero Systems. U.S. consumers looking to get a tax credit on an electric vehicle purchase will have fewer models from which to choose under new rules that limit the countries where automakers can buy battery parts and minerals. Only 11 of the more than 50 EVs currently on sale in the United States are eligible for the credits so far this year. Credits can make a big difference. They range from $3,750 to $7,500. They're aimed at boosting electric vehicle sales as the Biden administration tries to cut planet warming emissions. Car makers say they're scrambling to source parts that will make their models eligible for the tax credit. But those parts can't be sourced overnight. Some experts said they expect the reduced selection of tax credit eligible EVs to have only a passing impact 
on growing consumer acceptance of electric vehicles. That's the latest business news for you on this Wednesday morning. WNBF News Time 752. Coming up, Tech Trends with Mike Dubosky. Uh. From ABC News, Tech Trends. Sony is using CES to show off its latest headset, but that's not the only virtual reality device making news this week. Sony already makes a VR headset in the gaming-focused PSVR 2, but Upload VR's Ian Hamilton says that shouldn't be confused with its new device. It's going to be a completely different uh, market that they're appealing to with this headset. Instead, he says, Sony is targeting businesses. In industrial engineering design markets, but it's still very early in the story and they haven't really revealed much. In fact, Sony doesn't even have an official name for the device yet, but we are learning more about a different headset. Apple announcing that the Vision Pro will go on sale in store next month. You've got to go eyes in with this device to have any idea of what it's going to do for you and that that's coming. And that's Tech Trends with Mike Dabosky. Coming up next hour, more tech news with Kim Commando. What's the next big thing? That is the question. And Kim Commando has an answer. Coming up next hour, that'll be at 8.53 here on First News Binghamton. I'm Bob Joseph, in for Don Morgan on this Wednesday morning. Of course, a full update, all the national and world news you need in less than six minutes from ABC at the top of the hour. WNBF. 7.57 at WNBF and more wind on its way. That's right. Things may have calmed down a bit since those uh, very strong wind gusts last night. But the winds are going to pick up again, and the National Weather Service will have a wind advisory in effect for the Twin Tiers starting at 9 o'clock. So it's just an hour from now. Another wind advisory in effect from 9 this morning till 7 tonight. Here's the complete forecast from the National Weather Service. Cloudy today with a chance of rain showers. And then a mix of rain and snow showers late in the day. The high 38, mostly cloudy tonight, low 30. Cloudy tomorrow with a slight chance of snow showers mixing with rain during the afternoon. Tomorrow's high 38. Then Friday, mostly cloudy. A chance of rain in the afternoon and a high of 39 for the weekend. In case you are wondering, Friday night will be rainy and windy and blustery. And then Saturday... Cloudy with rain and snow showers. Saturday's high 42, and then quite a bit cooler on Sunday. Cloudy with a chance of snow showers on Sunday, the high 27. Right now in downtown Binghamton, it's 41 at News Radio WNBF and WNBF.com. Some of the wind gusts are pretty amazing. The highest wind gust. That I've noticed from the National Weather Service Binghamton office at the airport in the town of Maine, 48 miles an hour last night. So that, eh, that's pretty high for around here. And the highest that I have noticed so far from around upstate New York, 72 miles an hour at Penn Yan. So some very strong winds. And because of those winds, thousands of people, in fact, tens of thousands of NYSEG customers are still without power, including some here in Brome and Tauga counties. There actually are widespread outages in the Ithaca area in Tompkins County. So NYSEG crews working to get the power back on WNBF News Time 759. Hello everyone, this is Bill Flynn asking you to join me on WNBF 1290 Saturday morning at 8 and Sunday morning at 7. Of course, on Sunday, I'll be joined by Kevin Bixby, who will have your local news, weather, and sports. I'm happy to join the respected team at WNBF and ask you to listen in every weekend to the Bill Flynn shows on WNBF 1290. 
It's music that makes you feel good. The Bill Flynn Show on WNBF 1290. I'm Bob Joseph in for Don Morgan. You're listening to the Wednesday edition of First News Binghamton, 8 o'clock at WNBF.